If you have a rock and a piece of foam that are exactly the same size, the rock will feel heavier. This heaviness is due to the rock having a higher density than foam. Density is a physical property of matter and is defined as the mass of the object divided by volume. Remember that mass is the measure of the amount of matter in an object and is measured in grams. Volume is the three-dimensional space that an object occupies and is measured in cubic meters. If we have two objects of the same volume, the one with greater mass will have a higher density than the one with lesser mass. In solids, density remains mostly constant because the subatomic bonds keep the molecules tightly packed. However, in gases, the bonds are much weaker, which makes them responsive to temperature and pressure. Gases will assume the shape of whatever container they are in. Assuming we have a fixed mass of gas, meaning that we haven't added or taken away any of the gas, when we change the volume of the container, we are changing the density of the gas. A smaller container means smaller volume. According to our equation, density is inversely related to volume. So a smaller volume will produce a denser gas. This is because you are packing the same amount of molecules into a smaller space. So how do we actually measure the density of a gas? An easy way to visualize gas density is to observe its behavior compared to air. Think of helium-filled balloons. These balloons rise because they are less dense than the surrounding air. This density is so much lower that it causes the rubber balloon and string to float in the air. While observing the floating balloon tells us that helium is less dense than air, it doesn't give us a quantitative measure of what the density of helium actually is. If we knew the mass of the gas and the volume, we can easily calculate density. Let's assume we have a gas with a mass of 500 grams and a volume of 2 cubic meters. Dividing 500 by 2 will give you a density of 250 grams per cubic meter. Gases are highly responsive to changes in both temperature and pressure. In fact, car tire manufacturers recommend that you check your tires frequently if you live in climates that experience large temperature variations. Gases expand in high temperatures and condense in low temperatures. Thus, when temperatures drop, you could experience dangerously low tire pressures due to the low volume of air in your car tires. This is the same phenomenon that causes hot air balloons to fly. The gas burner heats the air inside the balloon, making it less dense than the surrounding air. The less dense air rises compared to the surrounding air. We can calculate how the density of air changes with changing temperatures using the ideal gas law. The ideal gas law is defined as PV equals nRT. P is pressure, V is volume, N is the number of gas molecules, R is the ideal gas constant, and T is temperature. The ideal gas constant is 0.0821 liters times ATM divided by moles times Kelvin. Generally, constants are values that have been previously verified by scientists, and we can insert directly into equations. You'll notice that volume is a variable in the ideal gas law, but neither density nor mass is a variable. To find density, we have to solve the equation for volume, or V. V equals nRT divided by P. To incorporate mass, we can use the number of moles, or N. The number of moles equals the mass of the gas divided by the molecular mass. Molecular mass is the mass calculated by adding atomic masses in the chemical formula. For instance, CO2 is composed of one carbon and two oxygen atoms. The atomic mass of carbon is 12.01 grams per mole, and oxygen is 15.999 grams per mole. So the molecular mass of CO2 is 12.01 plus 15.999 times 2, which equals 44.01 grams per mole. We can substitute for N into the ideal gas law in order to get mass into the equation. Since N equals mass divided by molecular mass, this would insert into our equation as V equals MRT divided by the molecular mass times P. Remember, our original equation for density is mass divided by volume. 
since we have volume on one side, we divide both sides by m. Since mass is on the top and the bottom of the fraction on the right, they cancel each other out. On the left, the equation is the inverse of density. Thus, if we flip the fractions on both sides of the equation, the left will be density. Using this equation, we are now ready to calculate the density of gas using temperature and pressure. Let's use CO2 as we were discussing earlier. The molecular mass of CO2 is 44.01 grams per mole. R is 0.0821 liters times ATM divided by moles times Kelvin. T is 273.15 Kelvin. P is 1 ATM or atmosphere. Note that the temperature in this equation must be Kelvin. 273.15 Kelvin is 0 degrees Celsius in the freezing point of water. So if we insert these values into our density equation, density equals molecular mass times P divided by RT, and solve for the math, we'll find that the density is 1.96 grams per liter. You can tell by this equation, if you vary the gas or the pressure, you'll also change the density of the gas. In this lesson, we learned that the density of the gas is equal to the mass divided by the volume of the gas. Because gases are greatly affected by changing temperature and pressure, we can also use the ideal gas law to solve for density. The ideal gas law states that PV equals nRT. This equation explains why car tires become underinflated during winter. When the temperature drops, the volume of the air must drop as well. While the ideal gas law is extremely useful in describing the behavior of gases in changing conditions, it does not have density as a variable. In order to insert density into the equation, we must use the relationship that the number of moles is equal to the mass divided by molecular mass. This substitution allows us to calculate the density of a gas with respect to temperature and pressure.